There we go. All right, hello everybody. If you're watching from the YouTube channel, uh, we're gonna be going through the new Dryad and Druid units. Uh, get my first impressions on them. We actually did some summons yesterday uh, and we were able to summon a lot of Dryads, one of each element. We kind of went through them briefly. I kind of want to go through them more in depth as well as look at the light and dark ones. Yesterday, we also did some summons and got the Fire Druid. Not for me though, for other people. Two, uh, two Fire Druids for two different accounts. We didn't get the water, the wind. I haven't really seen the light and the dark ones. So I want to look at them in depth and uh, check them out. Yep. Let's go ahead and start off here with the Fire Dryad Nisha. Gotta, gotta remember these. Um... Yeah, so if you guys on Twitch want to say hello to YouTube, feel free to do so. But uh, let's take a look at these uh, these units here. But as I said, I gotta try to remember these um, these names. Uh, Nisha, the Fire Dryad. All right, first skill. They all have these first skill. Attack the enemy and absorb the attack bar by 15% with a 50% chance. I believe this actually gets skilled up to 70. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? So even if it doesn't, it's still a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice skill. Right, it's very similar to, can I say Heart Magicians? How much does Heart Magicians reduce? Yeah, you see the Heart Magicians reduce at a lower rate. They sleep, uh, but they also reduce 15% attack bar. So I guess you could say it's similar like that, but with a higher activation rate, yeah? So it's an interesting skill one. Uh, skill two, a lot of these have these as well. Honeybee friends, you're able to not only just cleanse the harmful effects, but you're actually also able to put all those harm to harmful effects onto one target. Which is really nice, right? But of course, uh, these harmful effects that you put onto the target have to go through res resistance check, right? If it was not, didn't have to go through resistance check, that'd be pretty, pretty OP, right? But um, I think it's really good. And uh, it's pretty interesting skill. I can see this probably being used in a lot of PvE dungeons as well as PvP. Now, uh, the question is, of course, it seems very strong for Guild Wars and Guild Siege offensively. Will this be some of these units be used in guild siege for four star under it might be pretty interesting it might be pretty difficult to to beat some of them uh they do also have leader skills here 40 percent resistance for the for nisha here uh let's take a look at a third skill attacks all enemies and blocks beneficials for one turn so like i was just discussing about p p possible usage in siege obviously against kamun really good i don't know if you guys are doing siege right now and oftentimes find rena as well this unit can actually be pretty strong against those uh siege uh towers as well yeah daniel thank you for the one man as well as uh crystal shizzle thank you for the host man gotta get some island waves in chat for crystal shizzle i look forward to seeing you september 22nd uh if you guys are watching on the youtube channel just so you guys know some of you german viewers uh we will be i will be attending the eu finals in berlin september 22nd so I look forward to seeing you all. Hopefully, you guys signed up to attend that event. Yeah, and I'll be commentating here with Crystal Shizzle. I, I, I think. Yeah, I don't know if there's going to be any other commentators as well. Yeah. Nemesis with the 8-month resub. Thank you for the shotguns, Nemesis. Welcome back for the 8th month, dude. Appreciate the support, bro. All right. I'm not German. I know you're not German, Crystal Shizzle. I'm just saying that the event is, in, is EU and it's in Germany. Berlin. Right? What? <laughs> all right. Let's move on to the next element here. Uh, next element is the Water Dryad. Hey! Yeah. Water Dryad. Alright, as we know, skill 1 is the same. Now, how about skill 2? Uh, skill 2 is also the same, right? Removing all the harmful effects, puts them onto one target, right? Oh, and additionally, I forgot to mention that if there's no harmful effects to be removed, then you get to heal by 10%. And when you skill it up, you get cooldown reduction on this skill as well as you get uh, a little bit more healing. That's about it. Yeah. Third skill here, as from what I heard, oh, what's her name? Her name. Hern. Hern? Herne. Herne? Herne? Her. What sounds more girly? Hern. No. Herne. Herne. I'm gonna call it Herne, okay? Her, her name is Herne, okay? I don't care if that's the, the wrong pronunciation. I'm calling it Herne, okay? Uh, attack the enemy to decrease the attack bar by 50%. Okay, that's pretty nice. Um, and put the target in oblivion state for two turns. Oh! Okay, yes, yes, yes. I remember this now. This is the unit that does Oblivion, and we have been asking Comp to us for more units that put Oblivion. And it's nice to see, right, not just Asarin and not just, um, what's it, Isis, yeah, the LD Nat 5, the Light Desert Queen having Oblivion. But now a Water 4 star, right, a little bit easier to obtain, I guess you can say, than the, you know, Light Desert Queen, uh, also has Oblivion. This is nice. Uh, passive skills aren't activated in Oblivion. Okay, nice. So you reduce the attack bar and you put Oblivion. Pretty interesting. I mean, I, I can see that potential being used on a lot of different units uh, because in Guild Wars and just in PvP in general, there's just going to be a lot of units with passives that you're going to have to fight against. So it's good. Very solid. I, I like this a lot, actually. 
because having that first and second skill kit with this oblivion is gonna make this an easy guild work guild siege unit to be used yep as well as potentially for what you call um uh, four star under rta yep leader skill is 33 percent defensive lead okay interesting i'm trying to think of some defensive units that can be used in guild wars as well but uh yeah okay pretty nice yeah very solid unit yeah, moving on to god damn moving on to the win one malia skill one it's the same skill two is different here um attacks on mas to decrease their attack speed for two turns with a 50 percent chance potentially goes up with skill ups and their attack bar by 50 percent ah so, oh yes, this is the unit that we said yesterday was like, uh, if Rika and Spectra had a kid, okay? It would be Malia, okay? If Rika and Spectra had a kid, it'd be Malia. And obviously, as you can tell by the skill, right? It's, it's, oh, the reason why Rika and, and Spectra, Spectra because of the attack bar reduction and attack speed down, and because of the passive here that puts continuous damage every attack. It's kind of like the Rika, right? Basically it. Basically, and as you can already assume, it's going to be good for TOA, TOA heart. Yeah, so really nice, solid unit. It's going to give people the opportunity to get that water homunculus, as well as build this uh, this wind dryad if you have it for TOA, and be able to clear it a little bit more effectively. Uh, Guild War lead here, 33% HP lead. So obviously, you can see they're, ge they're gearing a lot of these towards Guild Wars and Guild Siege, which is pretty nice, yeah? Laxonius with 100 minis. Just pulled Dark Dryad. She is so nasty. Nani. We are just about to get to it. We're actually going to get to the Light Dryad right now, into the Dark One, Laxonius. I'm curious to see it. All right, let's get into the light dryad here. Felaria. F uh, Felaria? Oh, she actually looks really nice. Wait. Why does she look... I guess, I guess it's just the colors. The color scheme makes her look, like, taller and more broad. I don't know. Like, she's actually, like, a little bit... I, I don't know. Like her hair looks just bushier. It just me. It must be the color scheme. You know, with the shadows. I don't know. Yeah, she's really nice. All right. Uh, first skill, same. Second skill, same as the other ones. The honeybee friends. The, the remove harmful effects. Put it all into one unit. Right. Okay. Third skill. Let's see. This is the one of interest here. Uh, passive. Okay. Recover HP of allies granted with harmful effects by ten percent every turn. Okay. Uh, creates a shield that's equivalent to 10% of her HP on allies with no harmful effects for two turns. So if you don't have a harmful effect, you get a shield for 10% of her HP. Yeah, it depends on her base HP to see how much that shield is. Nice. Uh, she doesn't cleanse though. She just heals. So recover HP of allies granted with harmful effects by 10% every turn. Interesting. Okay. It's very interesting. She heals if you have harmful effects. So I'm assuming like, let's say like you're just about to die from a dot. Right? She's going to actually heal. She's not going to remove the dot, though. Keep that in mind. She will heal you for 10% if you have any harmful effects. Whether it's a dot, defense break, attack down, she'll just heal you for 10%. You'll still have the debuff there, which is kind of unfortunate, but um, she'll heal you. And if you don't have any harmful effects, you'll get a shield. So, I mean, obviously, if you're using it in Guild Wars or Guild Siege or 4-star RTA, building her first or quick might be nice. Because if you build her to go first, right, She none of your units are going to have harmful effects, right, if you're the first to move. And you're just going to put a shield for your entire team immediately. It's kind of like an instant passive Wusa shield. Uh, into whatever skill you want, I guess you can say. Yep. Or just the course of a battle. It's just every time she moves and you don't have harmful effects, you get a shield. It's kind of interesting. It's, 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 it's kind of interesting. Yeah, her second skill does cleanse. So, effectively, she can cleanse. Huh. This skill probably activates at the beginning of your turn. So it's not like you can cleanse and then you get a shield at the end of turn, right? It would be you heal into the cleanse, right? So if you had dots, you would take the damage from the dots as well as you would get the heal from her passive. And then you would cleanse those uh, whatever remaining dots of one turn or whatever to your opponent. Yeah? It's pretty good. Pretty interesting. It doesn't sound too broken though, but we'll see. Everybody out there that has one will be testing it out and uh, we'll see how it fares moving forward. But I don't see anything too crazy here for her. Uh, leader skill is accuracy and guild content. Okay. Interesting. Uh, this is the one that someone said was really good, right? Just summoned a dark dryad. Yeah, Laxonius here said. Uh, Hainas. Let's see. Skill 1. Same. Skill 2. Earth Friends. Oh, this is the one that reduces the attack speed and the attack bar by 50%. Put 
potentially goes up with skill ups here. And the third skill, Mandrake. Attack all enemies to increase the enemy's harmful effect duration by one turn and decrease the enemy's beneficial duration by one turn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, not not bad, right? I mean, it, 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 it's interesting. I mean, obviously, with this kind of skill, it kind of gears more towards, obviously, like the other ones, Guild Wars, Guild Siege, as well as potentially Four Star RTA or something like that. Um, yeah, you can you can actually Wombo Combo this with, let's say, oh, I mean, let's say you get this, right? And you don't get a Sierra. You Wombo Combo this with Bombers, right? Uh, like someone said in chat, one turn bombs, right? Can be used in TOA. These seem to be very good in Guild Wars, Guild Siege, 4 Star RTA, and TOA, all of them. Kind of seem kind of viable in that realm of the game, which is nice. Yeah? You know, it's one turn bombs, right? So you do it, and it happens. It's a 100% chance to happen. There you go. So it's nice. It's, it's a pretty nice skill. Followed by a leader skill in Guild Wars as well. Anytime you get leader skills, even if it's just in Guild content, it's pretty nice. I'm assuming even for Guild Labyrinth. Uh, sorry, forgot to mention, all these are going to be very strong in Guild Labyrinth as well. So, we'll take it. We'll take it. 100% activation, yeah. What do you mean to spare it? We'll stun for two turns. What do you mean? Oh! Yeah, it depends. It depends. It depends. Yeah, it depends. Increase enemy buff by 100%. Doesn't increase bomb cooldown. Oh, so it's not going to reduce bomb cooldowns? So it's not like Pang then. So it's not like Pang? Welcome to the Hawaiian stream. <laughs> I mean, it's not like uh, Nyx. Nyx, sorry. Nyx. Nyx is the one that does that, right? I think Nyx is the one that's pretty effective as, as doing that. Decrease the chance of allies being granted with weakening effects by 20%. Increase the durations of weakening effects that the ally ex... It affects that the allies, excluding that, that are under inabilities, grant on the enemy by one turn each with power. Ah, because those are... Wait, are those considered inabilities? It, it, it sounds like it should work with bombs because it's very similar to this. It's very similar to the wording of Pang. It's the same as Pang, right? Yeah, P Pang, Pang would do that as well. So I don't see why it wouldn't work with the, um, the, the Dryad. Right? But again, like, we'll see as people get them and uh, test it out. We'll get the, the official answer pretty quickly as well once people test it out. But I think it should work with bombs. I I'm assuming. Okay, that's my assumption. It's my assumption. But alright, pretty interesting there. Pretty nice. Yeah, I do like the skill set. I think they're all really strong. I'm very excited about this one because this one is uh, a little bit more easily obtainable, I guess you can say. And, um... Yeah, a little bit more easily obtainable and it has Oblivion, which is really nice and very interesting. So I'm excited for this, actually. Bombs count as harmful effects, so the skill would increase one turn of it. Uh, it when it says increase, though, it's, it's going to decrease uh, the movie. Yeah, it should decrease, if I'm sure. But we'll, we'll have somebody test it out and we'll get the official word on it. If you're watching from YouTube, you have one you have one of these. Or if you know somebody has one and you want to test it out, leave a comment let me know. Yeah, if it decreases bomb cooldown to one turn, because that'd be pretty nice. Are you in the Berlin... Are you in Berlin at the event? Yes, I will be, Nemesis. Am I going to be seeing you there? Potentially. Hmm? Alright, last last units we want to see here is, of course, the new Nat 5's Druids. The only ones that we summoned yesterday and we saw of was Belenus. Yeah, we'll go over it quickly. Uh, passive here, increase your attack power by 20% every time you every turn after your attack. Um, skill 1, attack an enemy and stun the target with a 50% chance. Now, the difference between these transforming uh, units in comparison to uh, unicorns is that so far from what I've seen, they don't gain additional turns after this, uh, after transforming. As well as they, their skills are the same. If you read Moonlight Flood, it's also going to be Moonlight Flood and it says the same thing. The skill description is, is for both units in that one skill. It doesn't change after you change forms like unicorns do. Yeah, so skill one has a chance to stun an enemy with a 50% chance. I think it goes up to 30 or something like that Skill two attack an enemy and inflict continuous damage for two turns in addition once you do this in druid form um, uh, When if you use this in beast form it attacks two times and transform into the druid form after the attack Yeah, so it's basically telling you if you're in druid form you do aoe continuous damage if you do it in uh, beast form it's gonna attack two times yeah, it just, just hits two times, and it's going to transform back into the Druid form, right? So, it gives you the whole description there in one shot, which is interesting, right? 
Uh, third skill here. This is the one that I thought was pretty, uh, pretty nice. Wild Roar. Attacks all enemies and weakens their attack power for two turns. In addition, when used in Druid form, weakens the defense of all enemies for two turns. So you put attack down, and then you put defense break. If you're in beast, beast form, you only put attack down. But obviously, you're going to be in Druid form when you start the battle. This might be one of the first skills you use, your third skill, right? Attack down. And you put defense break. In addition, transforms to beast form after that you use that skill, putting attack down and defense break, and has a 30% chance to provoke the enemy. Right? 30% a chance to provoke the enemy. I don't know if that goes up with skill ups. If it does, it's pretty nice. Maybe if it's up to 50, that's really, really nice. Followed by if this unit gets hit. Actually, this is the only skill that changes. Yeah, sorry. The passive does change when you transform. In the druid form, you get 20% every time you attack. In the beast form, if you get you you gain uh, attack power right by 50% and your counter attacks with a 50% chance yeah so third skill aoe attack down aoe defense break into druid form 30% chance to provoke the entire team followed by if they hit you be, uh, for whatever reason or they hit you because they're provoked you have a 50% chance to counter attack into skill 1 30% chance to stun you know it's just so many skills so many things in one i like it I really like it. People were saying that uh, this unit was definitely, like, one of the weaker ones. So, I'm actually curious to see what the other druids do. Yeah, I think this is pretty fun and pretty interesting. So, calm just if you can drop me a druid, it'd be great. I don't care what druid you give me. You give me the worst druid. I'll take it. Uh, as well as another thing to note is that their base stats are... Okay, the HP, the attack, and defense are fairly high. It's, it's interesting to see the HP pretty decent. And the attack and defense to be pretty high as well. Meaning that the skill one might hit pretty hard you know skill one usually scales off uh, attack the speed is a little lackluster though yeah unless this unit it doesn't awaken into speed does it no it doesn't what does it say uh you just oh they all just gain the passive what am i talking about the passive to transform yeah so uh the base speed is pretty crap yeah 99 base speed is pretty doo-doo yeah but uh eh. yo daniel thank you for the two months daniel yeah welcome back Appreciate the support, bro. As well as Paradoxin TV with the two months. Thank you so much for the, the two months, Paradoxin. And uh, Fudo Sky with a brand new Prime. Fudo Sky, refresh that browser. Rep with those evil to chat. I appreciate that brand new sub, man. Yeah, thank you so much, dude. All right, let's go ahead and uh, check out the Water Druid here now. Yeah, Water Druid skill one. Attack an enemy stunned with a 15% chance. Skill two, Wild Blow. Attack an enemy and recover 30% of inflicted damage as HP. Attack an enemy and recover 30% of the damage HP. Okay. In addition, when used in beast form, the attack will deal more damage according to your defense and transform into druid form. Okay, it looks like all the seconds, the second skills of the druid, the, the druids right now are have a, have a skill that transform you from beast to druid. Doesn't really have anything from druid to beast. Yeah, and it seems like the third skill is like druid to beast. So, so it seems like something to keep in mind uh, with the pattern here that's continuing. So in beast form, your attack will deal more damage according to your defense. If the multipliers are good, this can do some decent damage. And you also heal for 30%. Okay. I mean, it's just a basic skill, though. There's no harmful effects in it. There's there's just potentially high damage. Yeah? That's about it. Yeah, they also they, they scale on defense while being defense type, which is really nice. Yeah? Let's check out the third skill here. Uh, Wild Cure. Okay. Recover HP of all allies by 30%. In addition, when used in Druid form, increase the attack bar of all allies by 15%. And then transform to beast form and provoke. Oh, oh. recover HP allies 30%. Boom. Okay. When used in druid form, increases the attack bar of all allies by 50%. So you use it, you heal, and you gain. It's an attack bar booster. The only issue is that it means attack bar booster that provokes. Right? You heal, you boost 15%, and you provoke. It's like a weird attack bar booster that also only has notably 99 base speed. This, okay. Passive is if your attack bar increase your attack bar by 100% if you have 30% or more HP before and the HP fell below 30% from the enemy attack. 100% if you have 30%. What? So if you do too much damage to him, you gain a you gain a turn. It's not an instant turn, okay? It's not like, let's say, Triana, where, let's say, you kill uh, one of her allies and her passive procs, she instantly gains a turn. That's a different wording. You gain a 100% attack bar. Yeah? If there's other units that already had a 100% attack bar before you, they will move before you, before this unit. But you get, like, a full 100%... Wait. Wait, no, no, wait. Increase your attack bar by 100%. 
It's not increase your attack bar to 100%. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a 100% attack bar increase. So it's a nemesis cut. Because if you have 20% or 30% attack bar already, it's going to boost you to the top. And of course, you only can have 100% attack bar, right? But if you have 120 or 130, that puts you a higher priority in line than the other people that have 100 and, you know, somebody cut it move. So they're at 103, 104%, right? You cut right in. Oh! With, just like Siri just said, no cooldown. What? So, you take 30% damage, you skill 2, you heal. Or you skill 3, you heal. You take 30% damage again, you move again. How many times will you move? Yo, that's toxic, man. That's toxic. The only thing that is okay for me is that... I mean, it, it's gonna move a lot. You're gonna get to heal a lot and give an attack bar increase, which is the craziest thing, right? Um... But there's no, no, nothing too crazy. I mean, you, you get to stun and you get to potentially do some damage with skill 2. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Keep in mind, though, if you use skill 3, you get the cut, right? You get skill 3, you're going to transform. When you transform, it should be a different passive. Yeah, keep that in mind. I meant smarts in chat. Yeah, just because you, you get the turn and you use skill 3 doesn't mean it's going to happen again. Because when you change forms, right, it's, it's, you're going to use skill 3, heal, attack bar, increase into beast form, provoke. You're stuck in this form. You don't get another turn yet. And the passive is different. Increase your attack bar by 50% when you're attacked by an enemy. Yeah? So you will slowly get it back after you use third skill. Once you're in beast form, hopefully if you provoke, uh, can somebody let me know if you increase uh, the, the provoke increases from 30% to 50 or 70 with skill ups. Um, and you get provoked and you get hit, then you'll increase your attack bar by getting hit. Yeah? So, very interesting unit. Yeah, I can see potentially a lot of turn cycling with this unit and a lot of attack gauge increase with this unit. Yeah, it sounds decently broken actually. Sounds decently broken, but we're gonna have to see. He's a defense-based water unit. Lucian will eat him. Yes, Lucian will eat him in like arena and stuff like that. But in RTA, you're really not gonna be picking Lucian against you know opponents comps that you know have this kind of build. So they'll have other units in there that'll you know be annoying to Lucian, right? No skill is for pass. Huh? No skill is for pass. No, 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 no. Not not passive. This skill right here. 30% chance to provoke. I'm, I'm not talking about this in this one. I'm talking about this one. Yeah, is there, uh, with skill ups, does, do you increase from 30% to 50 or 70% chance to provoke? That's what I'm asking. Because the more chance to provoke, you know, the more broken this skill will become. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the Wind Dryad here. I mean, the Wind Druid. Don't think so. Okay, so it doesn't increase. All right, he might, he might work really well with Ragdoll. Slime would work better with Ragdoll. Real. All right, skill one stun, so same for all of them. Skill two, wild blow, the same here. You heal, change to to uh, to druid. Uh, you change to druid form if you are in beast. Yeah, in beast, I think you hit twice or something like that, right? Conditioning when using beast form, the attack will deal more damage according to you. Ah, it's just one hit, but you will change to druid form. Yeah, if you are in beast. So it looks like the combo is use third skill, which transform you into beast, and in beast you use second skill to transform into druid. It's basically it. Yeah, to use. Uh, it's, it's basically the, the, the combination or it's the series. <laughs> My friend that got him last night before your call, guess what the LDF I owns? God damn it. Does he own a, does he own a ragdoll? Is it really? No, Provoke stays the same. I have him. Ah, uh, okay. So Provoke doesn't increase. 30%. Okay. Keeps it from being too broken, I guess. All right. Third skill here. Forest of Living. Revives a dead ally target with 30% HP. If the target is alive, if the ally target is alive, cast Soul Protection for three turns. It's a revive or Soul Protection for one target though. Yep. It, it, it's it's kind of like Nigong, but Nigong revives the whole team, and if they are already alive, you get soul protection, right? Uh, in addition, when used in Druid form, increases the defense of all allies for three turns. Okay, you're most likely gonna use this in uh, Druid form. You're gonna get three turn defense buff. That's pretty nice. And then transform into Beast form to provoke enemies with 30% chance. Okay, defense buff, reviver. That's pretty nice actually. That's a single target. It's like a it's like a premium Iona. Is that, is that a good example? A premium Iona, right? Because you get defense buff for your entire team. You revive a unit, and if let's just say it's alive, uh, you can actually use that skill still as well, uh, and uh, you get soul protection, right? Whereas Iona, you only can revive if it's dead, and you get defense buff for that one unit. Well, check the passive here. Revives, revives into beast form with 30% HP at the moment of death. Oh. Hey, what's the beast passive? 
Create a shield that has the amount proportionate to your level for one turn whenever you're attacked by an enemy. In addition, revives with 50% HP at the moment of death. Wait, does that mean you have to kill him twice? So you kill him, and then he revives as this, and you kill this, and he revives as that. Wait, three times? How is it three times? Wait, wait, tell me why is it three times? Because what I'm seeing is, if you're this, it revives to this. If you're this, it revives to this. Oh, so you have to kill him three times to actually get rid of him. Ah, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see what you mean. Damn! Okay. That's actually fairly interesting. Yeah? So that makes him a, ver a pretty solid reviver. Because most of the times when you go up against revivers, um, they usually get killed first, potentially, right? This is, makes it a little bit harder to kill him. Oh, yeah, passive has cooldowns. I noticed, I noticed, I noticed. It has cooldown, I know. Uh, that's why I'm saying only two times. But it takes three times to kill him, right? Because you have to kill him the first time, he revives. Kill him the second time, he revives, then you have to kill him the third time for him to be gone. Right? Interest, stall AD, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, the, another interesting thing to note is that he's actually pretty hard to kill in beast form. Because if he's going to revive with 30%, right? 30%. And if you cannot kill him with that one hit, right? When you revive, all your debuffs are gone. There's no defense break on you. There's nothing on you anymore, right? So for somebody to actually have to reset up defense break or be able to nuke you for 30% of your HP that you have after this revive is hard. And if they don't kill you, you get a shield. So it makes it pretty difficult to kill in the beast form already. Yeah? Hmm. Yeah, Ganny reset. Obviously, if you use, you see this in PvP, uh, a lot of people are probably going to use potentially Ganny to like reset and things like that. But yeah, this is this is interesting. This is very interesting. Yeah, Oki also is going to be really good against this. Sekhmet's going to be really good against this as well. Yeah, but very nice. Yeah, I do like it. The defense, might I note, is definitely higher on the Windrood as well. Yeah, 758, 747, 747. Uh, don't forget. Uh, 834. Yeah. Okay. Now let's check out the last two units here, the Light and the Dark Druid. Skill 1 the same. Skill 1 Moonlight Flood. Attack all enemies and flick continuous damage for 2 turns. In addition, when used in attack 2 times. Okay, so it's the same as the Fire one. Yeah? So same as the Fire. Moonlight Flood. Same as the Fire one. Third skill. This is the, the different one here. Rage of Mother Nature. Attacks all enemies and removes all beneficial effects granted on them. So it's a stripper. In addition, when used in Druid form, increase their chances of landing a glancing hit for 2 turns and then transform into beast. Okay. This one is pretty... This, this one is pretty disgusting. Because, you know, there's already a chance, you know, to uh, CC a unit or bring in CC units. And, but you have to worry about your opponent having, opponent having, like, immunity, right? You get to straight up strip and potentially provoke. And you put glancing. Glancing is very big. Yeah, it's a huge debuff, especially in RTA. It's going to prevent your opponent from landing um, uh, most of their harmful effects. Wow. Okay. All right. Six turn cooldown. I don't know what it goes down with skill ups. It goes down to, goes down to four. That's pretty nice. Uh, I like, but let's be real, uh, I, I, Katos, can I get one of this? Volantis is his name. Actually, we didn't look at the other names. Tyrannis, Ab Abelio, Belenis, Steven. Yeah, you guys don't know Steven. That's his name. The fire was named Steven. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the passive here. Increase your attack fire by 20% every turn you attack. Ah, it's the same, same as this one. Yeah, same, same as the fire one. Uh, is it this one the same? The damage increases proportionate to your max HP when attacking counter. That's different. The fire one is it is is by a, is increase your attack fire by fifty percent. This one, yeah, increase your uh the damage increases proportionate to your max HP, and it's an HP type. Hmm. And it's an HP type. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, as well as he looks really nice. My dad. Okay, he looks like a beast. Let's be real. Yeah, looks like an actual beast. I like it. I like it. Pretty nice. Yeah, a lot, I can see why a lot of people are saying the light and dark one are pretty nice. Yeah. All right. How about the dark one? Patter. All right, Patter. Oh, this one actually looks pretty sick. Yeah, he looks like he looks pretty sick. Okay. Skill one same. Skill 2, Wild Blow, heal 30% of inflicted damage, right? Transform from a beast to druid. Third skill, Moonlight Grace. Removes all harmful effects granted on the... What? They both strip? 
when used in Druid form, grants immunity on all allies for two turns, then transforms into beast mode and provokes. Okay, so you don't like that. Oh, I actually like this one better. What's the passive? Removes all harmful effects if you're under inability effects at the start of each. What? Oh, oh, he, oh, oh! You're right. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't strip. He cleanses. Oh, okay. Oh, imagine if he stripped, dude. Imagine if he stripped. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. I didn't read that carefully. Yeah. All I saw was harmful effects. Okay. 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 Removes harmful effects. So he's a cleanser that puts immunity. That's not, that's not that good. Wait, wait. That's not that good. Because you transform and provoke, but if your opponent has immunity, you're not going to provoke. You cleanse it. Okay. Literally, Vela Jewel is better. Yeah? It, it, it's a Vela Jewel that doesn't do three turns immunity. It's a Vela Jewel that, uh, that, uh, doesn't, uh, that doesn't attack gauge increase, but it does provoke all your opponents for 30% chance. Eh. Yeah? He does have this passive, though, that kind of reminds me of, like, Raccoonie. Yeah, without the heal. Alright? It's kind of like a self Raccoonie every time. I guess. Right? So it's pretty hard to CC him. Right, he will pretty much. He's he's pretty much telling you he always will. He pretty much almost always will get a turn. Is basically what he's telling you. Yeah, it just can't be CC. He's like a. He's like a. He's like a chroma. Can't touch this, but you can. Wait, that actually makes sense. Can't touch this because that's what we named a chroma, right? Can't touch this, but this one is named. Can't touch this, but you can. You catch my drift there, right? All right, let's take a look at the. Uh, oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah. This this literally reminds me of World of Warcraft. Not gonna lie. Uh, all the skills are the same. Oh wait, removes harmful effects only on Druid form. So if you're in Beast form, you can't use a third skill. Nope, that. Yeah, that's kind of not that good, I guess. Skill three: increase your max HP by thirty percent. Recover the HP of all allies by ten percent each turn. Oh, ten percent heal for entire team. That's like a wait. Is Perna five or ten percent? I feel like Perna is ten, right? So this is like a Perna passive. Huh? I'll still I'll still take it though. Yeah. All right, looks like the light and dark ones are HP types. The rest are defense types. Really nice. Yeah, notably, uh, I do like the light one. Of course, that sounds really interesting. Uh, if I had to choose some of these, um, the water ones really seems very strong because you can get a lot of turns. It seems the most like uh, most usable in RTA. I feel like this kind of kit can be pretty nice in RTA. But uh, I really would like to see the wind one. Yeah, I would really like to use the win one. Yeah, because of all the reviving can be very fun in RTA as well. But overall, a lot of them have... I like how Comptuous is coming out with new kits for these units. And uh, new skills for 4 stars. They've actually given us Oblivion on that 4 star Water Dryad, which is really nice. But uh, if you guys are watching this from the YouTube channel, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, leave a comment below if I missed out on anything. But actually, leave a comment below on if you've summoned any of them. And if you haven't, or even if you have, which one would you want the most? I'm very curious. And again, anytime we do kind of videos like this, definitely uh, leave a comment and uh, we'll roll a random person who is uh, subscribed to the, the YouTube channel, uh, likes the video, as well as uh, leaves a comment. Yeah, to win a $10 iTunes and Google Play. But uh, yeah, everybody from Twitch, go ahead and say aloha to uh, YouTube here. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Peace out, everybody on YouTube.